brightest buildings in all of college basketball, Rupp Arena for the SEC on ESPN. It opened in 1976. Two years later, Kentucky won its fifth national championship. And now the Wildcats have January expectations of another title. They last won it in 2012 off a Missouri team that uh, last year won 25 games. That's Jimmy Dykes. I'm Carl Ravitch. Welcome. An outstanding atmosphere. And again, the early January expectations, maybe as high as they've been in seven years. Good start for Kentucky. Why are the expectations so high? Yeah, well, first of all, they have a lot of talent. And that they have the old talent and the young talent, which the great Calipari teams have always had, Ravi. This is a team that's playing as well as anybody in college basketball right now. In college ball, Ravi, you have to have two things. You have to have dogs and you have to have shooters. And that's what he got in this year's freshman class. These guys right here are loaded up in those two areas, man. They have a will to win that is rare and uncommon in college basketball right now. And it's a very skilled group, a lot of future pros, maybe as many as Cal's had in a long time. You look at what they did this past Saturday, that freshman class right there, they closed out the game on the road against Florida, scoring 35 of Kentucky's final 43 points. Man, you got to have some stuff about you to do that in a hot building like Florida was against a really good team. And John Calipari has his swagger back, and rightfully so. No doubt about it. Reed Shepard, who you saw at the top of the list, comes off the bench. So does Rob Dillingham, two absolute R&R guys that are far from rest and relaxation. We're ready to tip as Joe Lindsay's about to throw it up. Shaw jumps against Bradshaw. It's controlled by the Cats. This is DJ Wagner. It's the high screen from Bradshaw. And Trey Mitchell fires a three and knocks him down. What a start for Kentucky. Starting five from Missouri, Tamar Bates, Nick Honor. He's a bowling ball out there, an absolute muscle. Shaw Carter and Sean East, who's scoring, has gone up by 10 points this season per game. That's him with the ball, 55 in black. Here's Honor. He knocks down a jumper. That's a three, and we are not at early. UK starting five, Edwards is number one, Reeves is the veteran, he's been outstanding so far. Wagner, Bradshaw, and Mitchell, who's already got the three. And he'll launch another. And that's good, and boy, he looks and turns like, this is easy to start. Ravi, one of the weaknesses for Missouri in their switching defense, they don't switch out high and hot and get the shooters quick enough. And Kentucky, back-to-back -back possessions have already taken advantage of it. Tabar Bates, number two, real good shooter, a left-hander. And East goes over the double team. Bradshaw straight up. That's a tough shot. I like what he did, though. You have to go through the arms of Bradshaw. If you continue to do it, you'll also pick up a foul on him. Reeves missed a quick three, and this time Missouri able to rebound. Bradshaw still not well disciplined and going straight up with his arms. And that's Missouri's number right there. If they make 10 or 11 threes, they're going to stay in this ball game. Noah Carter back to back buckets. Missouri on top on a very fat start to this game. Hall of Fame coach Calipari been on the sideline 15 years at Kentucky. Dennis Gates in his second season for Missouri. Pretty left handed runner by Wagner. He, he makes so many hard shots. You go back and watch the Florida game, every shot that he took was in traffic around the rim. And his ability to get downhill against that Missouri switch will be there all night long. He's guarded by Reeves, the lefty, the pull-up baseline jumper, and they are on fire early here to start. Are these legal rims? <laughs> they may be bigger. They're four of what four, and they got ten quick points. Wagner in the paint, dumped it off to Bradshaw, and it's a turnover. East uses that shoulder, and that's their first miss. Shawnee's testing Kentucky's ability to stay in front of the ball early. One of the things that Kentucky has to get better at overall. Mitchell. Free throw line. He's three for three, and he is so comfortable. Amazing how many things happen well when you win the touch of the elbow and the nail like Mitchell just did. Tough defense that time from Bradshaw. He altered the shot from Carter and a run out. Edwards kicks to Reeves. Pretty move. All those Kentucky guards are outstanding at the sidestep off the drive. Very difficult to draw a charge against those Kentucky perimeter players. Reeves off a 19-point game against the Gators. Bates 
forces it, and he gets it. Well, Missouri getting that ball to the paint now. Has to have the concern of John Calipari in this game right off the bat. Five and seven to start for Missouri. Wagner. That's good for both teams on fire. Maybe the buckets do need to be measured. <laughs> Wagner off that high ball screen, though, is a real problem, especially if he becomes a 35, 36% three point shooter. Whoa, East had that ball fake, but he missed. Teams 11 of 15, both combined. The alley oop, that's so high. It's hard to throw one too high for Bradshaw, is it not? Man, Ravi, the hot shooting. The key in this game, the early threes are flying as Antonio Reeves comes off that handoff play and then just space right back out of it off that switching defense, making Missouri pay for the switch. And the downhill ability of Wagner gets him to the top of the key and fires as well. Hot shooting start in Rupp. Reed Devine of coming off the bench. Tell me how you feel about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. You know, I'm going to do anything uh, I need to do to help the team win, help the team play better. So whatever I have to do, whether it's starting, not starting, it doesn't matter to me. Plan minutes, plan less minutes, anything I can do to help the team win, I'm all in for it. Rob, how about you? Well, I feel like going with the same thing. Reed says, like, we all care for each other the same amount. So whether we start or not start, like, we just want to win the game, so whatever we can do to, to contribute off the bench, whether it's coming or off the bench or starting, I feel like that's what we do every game. We just take it as a role that we can achieve. It makes you feel better. I came off the bench my entire career. <laughs> <laughs> they, they both got it. They understood the joke. Right, that's a huge story. That you they got, both come off the bench. Absolutely it is, because I, there's not a, another team in the country that has more future pros that Kentucky has right now. And they have two of them coming off the bench. And they will check in here before the next media timeout. Those are game-changing guys. And it speaks volumes to how they were raised, how they see the importance of being a good team member. And I think it speaks volumes to NBA scouts to know you got a couple of guys that are high-quality kids. This is Carolero Martin is into the game. He wears 13. Kurt Lewis, four into the game. Here's a turnover in Reeves. One-on-one -on -one with Lewis. Throws it up, and he'll shoot a couple of free throws. To your point, too, along with the playing time, Cal plays about eight guys at least 20 minutes, and Shepard gets about 26 minutes a game off the bench. It's one of the more unselfish teams we have in college ball, and the assist numbers back it up. And look at those current NBA draft rankings. Uh, there's not another team in college ball that has as many future pros and really good pros and I will always tell you if I got a bank on experience or talent I'm taking talent and he has both this year this kid Reeves at the free throw line a much better overall player much better defender much better at driving through contact and yards after contact on a basketball court I like that little yak on a court Connor Vanover's into the game he's 75 you can't miss him he is 75 as a number he is seven foot five inches tall and here's another bad pass. Reeves stepped out of bounds. What number would you be if you went by your height? 57. <laughs> 50, quick point guard skills. Oh, yeah. Got a good handle. Go to the left. Yeah. Crowd love that defensive effort from Reeves, and that's one of the aspects of his game that's come a long way. For a while, he, he was such a good shooter. And as Cal said, the one thing we asked him to do Pretty soon, they're going to figure out you can shoot. you got to be able to create offensively and also turn it up on the defensive end. Yeah, that's part of the NBA feedback to Reeves was, we want to see you be more of a dog, on-ball defender, and he has taken it to heart. And a kid last year that teams went at as a defender, now he's starting to say, Coach, give me the, give me the guy that's hot on the other team, and I'll lock him up. And he's more than capable, all of 6'6", of the long wingspan and tough. A lot more muscle this year. So fan over now. Camps himself down there, and that's a turnover. Mitchell corner to Reeves. Oh, what a great catch there by Edwards on a ball that was sailing over his head. Wagner slows it down and calls a play. The play was nearly a four-point play. It went in and out. He'll shoot three free throws. That ghost screen worked. 
Wagner, a 31% three-point shooter on the year, and you mentioned the ghost screens. I think you'll see a heavy dose of it from Kentucky in this game. The reason why, Ravi, against a switching defense, when you execute a ghost screen, which is a fancy example for a fake screen, that puts the defense in a little bit of a guessing game, and Kentucky will continue to do that. You still have the drive ability, but this kid right here is an absolute beast getting to the rim. PJ's dad, of course, played at Memphis under Cal's granddad, Milt Wagner. Got a title at Louisville in 1986. Well, he's got that great Calipari of the past body in that point guard spot. He's got the speed. And his ability to make so many hard shots against Florida, against size at the rim, was so impressive. Just one after another. Five minutes in, they've opened up a seven-point lead. Wildcats, we haven't seen Dillingham or Shepard into the game yet. Kentucky has not fouled yet. Missouri, a team that has not been able to get to that free throw line much this year at all. They rely on that jump shot. If it doesn't go, they're in trouble. They're in big-time trouble. That long three missed from Lewis. Tough pass, and Vanover's there to pick it off. There were three black jerseys between him and the guy he was trying yeah. to throw to. Just simply not there. And here comes Shepard and Dillingham to the scorer's table as East is in the paint. Carolero Martin one on one. Ten on the shot clock. East finds a little hole, and that's going to be goaltending. Bradshaw went above the rim. East is a hard guard, man, and Cal knows it. That's the one guy that can keep Missouri in this game. And now the game changes with two big time dynamic guards checking in. They've known about Reed Shepard from London, Kentucky for a long time. Both his mom and dad went to Kentucky. He was a high school superstar. And his game translates at any level, including the next one. High IQ, terrific shooter. I, I think he's the next Steve Kerr mm. slash J.J. Redick in the NBA. He's 6'4", with as good of a stroke as I've seen in a freshman class in a long time. But that's, he's much more than a shooter. 15 in white, Dillingham 0 in white. Mitchell's already it. made a couple of these, and he threw that one up way too hard. And you're just hoping for a miss instead of defending if you're Missouri continuing to cover that ball screen like they are. We'll go on Yenso into the game, 33. He is their big guy, and it's Dillingham. And that's a foul, and he will go to the free throw line to shoot two. So our point about Shepard, though, getting those hands up with the deflection. 25 wins last year for Dennis Gates, and to your point, and this is something that you want to emphasize, Missouri has taken 68 fewer free throws than their opponents. 68. That's a big number to overcome, and I was at their practice in October, and Dennis was very clear with his team. We want to lead the nation this year in three-point attempts, three-point makes, and offensive rebounds, which lead to what they call dagger threes with a kick out. But their inability to get to the free throw line is concerning. And in their last game against Georgia, a loss, their game plan was to go more in the paint, which would lead to more free throws. They outscored them in the paint. It didn't lead to more free throws. Well, they take seven for the game yeah. on, a, on their home floor. Moving screen. Yes, it was on Carolero. Martin, 13 in black. It just feels, given the firepower of Kentucky, even though, Jimmy, there's 13, 30 to go, and the lead was seven, now it's six. At any minute, it could grow to 15, 20. Well, because you have multiple guys that can go on a 6 8 0 run all by themselves. This is this is a high octane offense. They go to their pistol action right now. I guess Dillingham going downhill. Mm. Dillingham is a mixtape. He is. A one-on-one -on -one machine who's learned a lot this year about the team game. Ravi, I call that pistol action. Just a guard passing to a guard as that ball's advanced up on a side and allows the guy that caught it to immediately spin and get right into the teeth of the defense. Vanover, good pass. Carolero right up over Shepard. They try to take advantage of that height that Carolero has. Look at Dillingham. Alley-oop, no, he ended up shooting it, and Agnieszko denied by Vanover. Oh, 
East loves that ball fake, and they will pass it around. He had a chance for a three, and there's a very good interior pass to block, but Vanover, a piece of candy, lays it back up and in. Yeah, but that was the best ball movement by yes. Missouri in this game. Maybe even turned one down that they should have taken, but... Shepard, straight and off three, he buried it. I'm telling you, that, that switching defense, Missouri's going to have to think about what are we doing. You cannot give a team like Kentucky good looks coming off those ball screens. And unlike years past, there are a number of guys you can't give open looks. Oscar Shibway, the last couple of years, they didn't shoot threes like they're shooting them this year. And they're sort of back into some territory, Jimmy. They haven't been in, in a while when it comes to three-point attempts 40 percent nearly 40 percent of their field goal attempts this year for kentucky are three-pointers well they can open up the floor last year as great as oscar shibway was he got in the way Absolutely. a lot of times offensively and not now man cal can open that floor bradshaw can shoot as a seven footer made the closeout shot against florida on saturday Asked Cal about his best shooting teams relative to this one he brought up 10 and 11 with lamb and miller and knight and liggins it's hard to press Kentucky. They smack action. Bam, there it is. They pick you off in the backcourt with a ball screen they call smack, and now they have the numbers on the other end. A whole different look for this Kentucky team with their ability to put the ball in the basket from deep. A little quieter there from Noah Carter. And Dennis Gates, with a seven-point deficit, wants to talk about it. The three-point shooting for Kentucky has been a big story, Jimmy. They are four of six in the game. Well, they're getting good looks. And Kentucky, you know, multiple guys, they make 10 a game. There's that ball screen, and you don't step up high and hot and heavy. Shepard's going to take advantage of it every time. And this is a team, and their speed game in transition is lethal because of spacing and shot making. Kentucky has all three. Ravi, it's very difficult to press Kentucky. They they run what they call smack action. It's a ball screen in the backcourt, and all it does is give you numbers on the opposite end. And again, I talked about Kentucky. I know how fast they are from one end to the other, but they have great spacing and shot making. That's why they are one of the top four teams in college basketball in transition right now. Look at the three-point numbers. Both teams seen a big rim. Did you know that two basketballs can go through the rim at the same time? I did. I think we did that we years did that ago. One. You I'm going to check these for three at halftime. Yeah. Give me a ladder. And I think some of the people at home were a little confused by all the cats and the dogs thing, but the point that Calipari made about the victory over Florida was, uh, I got dogs. Even though they're wild yeah. cats, he's got dogs, a lot of them. And so far, the scoring's been pretty balanced. Mitchell's got eight, Dillingham's got six, Wagner's got seven, as Trey Mitchell, number four, back on the floor. He started with a couple of threes in this game. And Kentucky up seven. See what Gates wanted to do in that timeout, and it's probably not that. D.J. Wagner drive and lay it up with his left. His confidence going downhill is just growing weakly right now for the Cats. And he probably drives left 75% of the time. Wagner's got nine triple team, and they may have gotten Dillingham with a reach, and they did. So they foul on Dillingham. Duke in Pittsburgh, that's coming up right after this one. Figure it's going to be a battle of the big men with Filipowski going up against Blake Hinson. That's at the Peterson Event Center. Filipowski averaging just shy of 17, and Hinson just over 19. If Pittsburgh has any chance of getting back in that NCAA conversation, I know it's early January, they got to win the game. Yeah. They've already lost to North Carolina. They don't play them again. They get Duke twice here in the next 12 days, I believe. You better take advantage of that one tonight. Vanover construction project with that brick from high above the arc for a three. You know, I had to re-brick my home a few years ago. I remember Brick that. started falling off the yeah. side of my house. I remember the video. Rain was the worst part of that. <laughs> Here it is again. Dillingham, he floats and he gets it to go. Yeah, it's just hard to stay in front of him, man. Hard to guard is Dillingham, so quick. Exceptional speed with the ball. Well, Bates got to knock down that three. It was open, he couldn't, it's tipped out, and he'll regain it. Yeah, you, you cannot take surprise shots in this game if you're Missouri. Vanover throws it up, that's no good. Watch the speed, watch the spacing on this transition. Danger time with an 11-point lead. He'll kick it to Wagner, who will throw it around the horn. Bradshaw, too strong. Look at Shepard go after it, and Bates held him. That was on Bates. 
And I look at Dillingham again. They run that side action, and whether it's a handoff or just a simple pinch, those guards have momentum coming downhill. And it's not only Dillingham. It's if this guy, why is he hard to guard? He is absolutely rather fearless speed with the ball. We just saw that. A little, times a little risky, but that's okay. He's a 37% spot up field goal attempt when he shoots 48%. He's taken 37 of them, and he's driven his own guy 37 times. Great bounce out of zero in. Wow. Look at this kid. Look at that long three. He can drive it, and he can shoot it from outside. Rob Dillingham. He's got 11. And a lead quickly to 14. Dillingham's defense there. Well, a 48% shooter in the spot ups is Dillingham in, on synergy. And that's a, that's a spot up catch and shoot. And if you're not out there on the airspace, he will rise and fire. But the problem with Dillingham, you take away his airspace, boom, now that risky fast speed comes into play. By this Kentucky team, and they're wired to score this year. Former Jack 45 into the game for Missouri as they're going deep into their bench. There was a chance we see John Tonje tonight. He hasn't played, he's been injured. Anthony Robinson not available. He's sick and in the lean, a little as Tamar Bates left handed jump hook. One on one defense to Shepard, he has it. Saw a crease, but he had that ball knocked away, and here's East. What I say, risky speed with the ball. He'll yep. turn it over. East, a dribble machine, and that goes up and in over Bradshaw. He is having a fantastic year, is Sean East. We'll talk about some of the most improved players in the SEC. He and Beachy Johnson from South Carolina, Mark Sears at Alabama. Yep. They have taken one big giant step on the offensive end. He's averaging 17 after averaging seven last year. He's got six now and lead back to 10. Dillingham kick, Mitchell three, too strong. Kentucky was running what they call open right there, just completely opening up the floor with five out. Sean East steps into a three, Calipari calls timeout. You'll fall asleep and East will make you pay. Your pickup spot on East has to be at the four-point line. Kentucky got stopped at the three or inside the three. Not good news for Cal. Like Sean East, Rabbi, is shooting 54% from the three-point line. So your pickup point on him has to be at the four-point line. And look at Reed Shepard, 15 and white. He gets buried inside the lane and doesn't recover with urgency. And the message going to that timeout from Calipari to Reed Shepard was you cannot give him airspace. Part of the message during the shoot-around was you can't give them airspace. Yeah, One of the no. things we got to do is close out on their threes. Well, Florida got off 23s in the first half against Kentucky, and 16 of those 20 attempts, Ravi, they were wide open. Not a Kentucky player in the film. Shepard alley -oop. Bradshaw came right down on the joke, and it's Shepard again with it. Good pass to an open Wagner with a ball fake. And will stay with Kentucky basketball. North Carolina, North Carolina State. Jim Beheim's going to be on that game Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern time. A tobacco road rivalry. NC State won the last matchup 77-69. That was back February 19th. Jim Beheim needs to go and get a Mondo burger before that game. Ooh. Mondo Baycott. Well, he had a monster week last week. Oh, wow. Oh, that's that's the rim shrunk. And word from the truck, <laughs> Beheim is not going to be able to get a Mondo Burger. Okay. He's in Pittsburgh tonight. What can you get there? Pimentos, Pimentis. Right around the football stadium, you got all sorts of football burgers if you want one. I'm Sean Neese. I'm hard to guard because I'm a three-level scorer. I like to find my teammates. And also uh, be a verbal communicator on the court. Some say I had a basketball as soon as I came out the womb. 
pretty good description of himself. He is an off-the-bounce star, though, Ravi. Everything he does is bouncing that ball three, four, five times into his shot. He's averaging five layup attempts per game. Very difficult to keep him out of the paint. And one-third of his attempts are off that middle pick-and-roll action. And that's 55 in black is a real challenge for Kentucky in this game. He's the SEC the overall, yes, yeah. exactly right. For the first time really ever, he's played for the same coach two consecutive years. Boy, Bradshaw looked like he went straight up, and Majaka's going to go to the free throw line. But back to East, he's been around. He went to UMass and Bradley, and, and now he's here. And for back-to-back -back years, he's got Dennis Gates and the coaching staff. So you say, well, what, what does that mean? Ultimately, it means he's a lot more comfortable. He's a lot yeah. more confident. They can see what he's all about when it comes to his hard work. When you move between schools so often, nobody can see that. Well, there's another guy that lives in the gym, and they say that is routine. About 10 minutes to late every morning, you hear the ball bouncing, and it's Sean East. Ravi Bradshaw got that last foul. He has a, a, a habit right now that he's going to have to break. He's a seven-footer. But he can still continues to put his arms out over the top of the offensive player, and guys are going through his arms and picking up fouls because of those instead arms. Of, instead of straight up. Yes, his elbows have to get by his ears is how you teach it. Reeves, four points on the night. Looks for the handoff, and he gets it from Mitchell. Then he pops, and that's short. East one-on-one -on -one with Mitchell, who will keep dribbling. Wide open, Carter. Got it. That is their game. And Sean East that time went behind the backboard, but the vision to find that hard match Noah Carter trailing from that four spot. And Missouri has shot their way right back into this game. Carter's got 11. It's a four-point game with 6.45 to go. Reeves has set him up for a corner three. That's off. Antonio Reeves this year shooting 44%. He's got 36 threes to lead the team. East, and they're going to call Majok. He moved everybody in white. Not only did the screen move, the wall of Majok move there. Yeah, working off that high ball screen for East. Here's the previous possession. His ability as a left-hander to be driving to his right, throw it back outside across his body, right in the shot pocket of Noah Carter. Carter has not shot the ball with a high clip so far this year, but he's coming in off of a game where he made three threes against Georgia on Saturday. They are in our boys. Rob and Reed back into the game for Kentucky. Bradshaw. That's good. He had the biggest shot of the game against Florida. That three late set up for him. Also had a big block in that game late. Perry kept telling everybody, he, he uses the message, I believe in you. He certainly said that to Bradshaw after he made that three. One-on-one, -on -one East, that's his patented yeah. move, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. You know, he is giving Kentucky the business right now. His wife, Missouri, is hanging in this game. And you watch Kentucky play. And Break them down on synergy. They're not the best yet at just on ball defense winning their war. And that time, Shawnee is just a bigger physical guard and an older guard gets Dillingham hopping around, but you never want to be the hopper around that restricted arc. This kid right now is feeling very confident in Rupp Arena. Looking for his 12th point. He and Carter 11 each, and now he's got 12 to lead the way. Missouri's done a terrific job of fending off these cats, and now a double team. East calls out the defense, and Mitchell trying to take advantage of it. Shepard, no good. Terrific box out there by Carolero Martin. A really good close out there on Shepard to make him take a tough one. Oof. Carter spun right into Bradshaw, got banged in the nose, and lost the ball. I mean, look at the fouls, though. Kentucky has only fouled three times in this game, so Missouri continues to bite him in the backside. Their inability to get to that free throw line and not draw fouls. Token full court pressure, and given all the guards and their ability to handle, that's a dangerous play against this team. And there's a reason why the alley oop to Bradshaw from Shepard. I just don't think you can extend your defense against Kentucky. 
Too many shooters, too much length at the rim on the back end of the press offense. Good kick to the corner. Bates thought about it. And now drives. May have got away with a walk. The three is no good. Loose ball. One by Reeves. Oh, it's going to be an intentional foul. He grabbed him around the waist with no intent to block. Calipari's looking for it. Watch the previous break, though. Missouri, they're going to extend their pressure. And again, it's a smack action in the back that doesn't even have to have great effect. But all it does, he gets a numbered break going. And Reed Shepard, great shooters are great passers in transition. And 15 in white to 2 in white is automatic. And to your point, Ravi, they will look at this because excessive, unnecessary, was a legit play on the ball. And you have to protect those airborne shooters in college basketball. The emphasis now in place for the last three or four years. It wasn't what you would deem a hard foul. The question was, did he, did he try to make a play in the ball, or did he just grab him by the waist and spin him around? Well, he takes a swipe at the ball with his right hand right there. But then the left hand grabs around the waist. Our official tonight, Joe Lindsay, Myron Jarrett, and Jeb Hartness. I, I, Rev, I just think that's excessive slash unnecessary, heavy on the unnecessary. When you grab a, a guy around the, the waist like that, Joe Lindsay on the left with the headset on. Here at Rupp Arena, you understand the expectations as we await the call, but this year feels a little bit like the throwback when Cal first got into the one and dones and they had the superstar players. He's got so many of them. And in this conference, here you go. So two shots, call on the floor stands. You heard Joe Lindsay talking to the microphone. A little separation between Kentucky, Tennessee, and Auburn in the top of the conference, would you say? Kentucky, Tennessee, and Auburn are three of the top ten teams in college basketball. And we're kind of waiting to see the rest of the league, kind of who's going to jump up there in that four and five spot. But all three of those teams I just Reeves mentioned are legitimate Final Four contenders coming out of the SEC this year right now. Reeves, an 82% free throw shooter, goes to the line for two. Cal's one of those guys who can look at his phone and instead of sort of name dropping and you're like, yeah, well, whatever. Like he has so many people that he speaks to or reaches out to him. It was John Wall who reached out to him before the Florida game and kind of encouraged him to let this group play a little looser. Yeah. You know, and today the game plan was all about spacing and that dribble, drive, three-point open shots, and it's worked. I think Tyler Euless on that bench is also has the ear of Calipari in terms of how guards see the play and how they want to play these days. And Cal, to his point, did an outstanding job of adjusting to the game of college ball. Good hands that time by Honor. He ripped it away from Bradshaw after Mitchell made a nice pass to him. East has Edwards on him, and he's quick with that bounce. He's got his hands all over Edwards' hip, and that's going to stay with Missouri. He uses his offhand. We saw that on that play he made underneath to kind of fend off the defender. Is he in jeopardy of having that called against him? A little bit, but he's a, you know, this is a kid that's wired to score, Sean East is. He's always been, he was the National Juco Player of the Year two years ago. And those guys, they know all the tricks and all the knacks. Missouri's oxygen is live ball turnovers and get their run game going. And it's hard to do against Kentucky, who is as good as anybody taking care of the ball. Carter's got some cotton stuck in his nose after getting whacked on it and starting to bleed. That's an extra step, and that's going to be a walk on Bates. Shepard's pointing, and he throws a long pass, and they got an alley-oop set up. But Shepard saw that before he had the ball inbounds. That's that high IQ. He recognized we got three guys down there. They got one if we can get it there. He is a basketball savant, is Reed Shepard. 
I don't know if he wants to get into coaching one of these days, but it would not shock me 25, 30 years from now that Reed Shepard's not the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. Hmm. His dad, Jeff, of course, two-time national champion here. His mom, Stacy, UK legend herself. Jeff said about her, she scored more, had more assists, more rebounds, more steals, made shots at a higher percentage than me. Yeah, Count, Count will read himself. You're starting to play like your mom. Yeah. And that's an all-around game. Dad could shoot, and so could Reed. Wide open three, and during the shoot around last night, he made every one of those. Tamar Bates from the corner. Four point game. Missouri will run it right up your backside as well, and they space the floor with shooters. No one in the airspace of Reeves. Shepard, as we hit the 320 mark of the first half, Bradshaw, no good. They've gotten a little cold here from three. Well, Bradshaw can make those, obviously, a big one against Florida, but taking the bait right now. Missouri not afraid to come off of Bradshaw to stop the ball, so that middle three-point shot will be available for the Kentucky Bigs. <laughs> yeah, except because when I shot the ball, the, the game was already decided. I was telling the guys today, I think I'm 21-0 yeah. as an Arkansas Razorback when I actually got to play. So never, never lost a game that I played only in. Only in the lopsided leads did you yes. come in, not yes. the lopsided deficits. I was the closer. <laughs> the Mariana Rivera. Well, to Seth's point, and back it up, Kentucky was making threes early, 5-7. of seven. Since then, 0 for 6. So are those six they missed bad shots? Well, they, they've taken good shots Kentucky has in this game, but to Seth's point, Missouri doesn't, I don't think they really want to defend to that fourth, fifth, sixth pass. They want to scramble you up and speed you up and trap the life out of you. Missouri's the type of team that they don't let you run plays, they make you make plays. And Kentucky did not have enough playmakers last year is why they lost the game at Missouri. Mm -hmm. They've gotten Nugano Onyenso back. He's that seven-footer. Only played, now this is fifth game. That takes Mitchell off the five spot, which has really freed him up. Playing a more natural four. Tough defense from Bates. Shepard with four on the shot clock. Goes baseline, dumps it down, and how did he get that to Mitchell, who will get fouled and shoot a couple? What a terrific inside bounce pass from Shepard. Yeah, it's probably Missouri's best defensive possession until the very end. You know, we were talking about dogs earlier. You know who else loves dogs? Oh, yeah. Trey Mitchell. Right here, as we have a pause in the action. That, that's Trey's dog, Aura. She's a Portuguese water dog. She'll be two years old in May. You see, that's the, that's the love of my life when I go home is, is Aura. And the Portuguese water dog, Ravi, they were actually bred to carry messages from the boat to the land back at, during war times. And, Trey said she is extremely smart. She knows who will give her a snack and who won't. What smart dogs don't know that? Yeah, yeah. So before he puts his head on the pillow, he says to the dog, what? Good night, Aura. No, well, or <laughs> good night, my love. <laughs> <laughs> you are a mess. How's that? <laughs> just said he's the love the dog is the love of his life what a job by Mitchell to block that one from Carter a pause in the action yeah I know I love that yes. pre free throw do a dog every game Wagner from behind he had that blocked Tamar Bates has already got a couple of fouls Feels like the last two minutes are critical here. Five-point lead for Kentucky. They've led by as many as 14 in the first half. One went off the top of the backboard. Edwards still looking for his first points. That's off on Yensu. Missouri trying to go at Reed Shepard right now in transition. And they just spread the floor and run five out and let Shawnees come down the middle of the pipe. 
Not many guys are going to stay in front of East. No, no, that's. You're going to have to get a lot of help. And the, the, the problem is East, as he said in his own hard to guard description, is very good at spraying the ball to shooters. Multi-directional. When East goes north to south, you've got problems. Long three, no good. And Enzo reached up for those paws and pulled it down. Pause reference for you. you got <laughs> Love it. Shepard, good it's cut. Tough. Yeah, Reeves throws it up, and he'll go to the free throw line. As an offensive player, when Shepard has the ball, are you more inclined to make a cut because you know you're probably going to get the ball? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talk about a lot of times guys that see the game one pass ahead, and that truly is yeah. Reed Shepard. The guy that's he's, he's almost hard to guard. Talked about him being a basketball savant, Reed Shepard, but his defensive instincts, his passing instincts, everything that he does. As a spot-up shooter, Ravi, he's making 55% of his shots. As a pick-and-roll handler, he comes off and knocks down 63% of his shots. And then in transition, he's making 75% of his attempts. That is as elite of a shooter as we have in college basketball. Reeves knocked down a couple. Shepard tonight isn't exactly stuffing the stat sheet. He's only got three points. A couple of assists, but they are meaningful minutes. And again, he's piling up the minutes coming off the bench. Vanover back in. We got a buck and a half to play in the first half. He's with Wagner on him. Fade away. That goes. Sean East got 15. I love how you picked up on his ability to just kind of nudge just enough, man, to get some separation into his own spot. Really well done by 55 in black. Shepard had that one deflected. Again, Reeves was cutting as he was driving. 10 on the shot clock. Wagner. Right around Vanover, that's a tough shot. And how did he start off again on the left side of the floor with his left paw going downhill? A monster. Three is missed. Tanje is in. John Tanje, five in black. The last couple of seconds here in the first half getting some action. Ravi, on the rise of the shot, if you're Missouri in this game, you've got to commit. Are we going to the offensive glass? Or are we sprinting our tails back to defense? Because Kentucky is so good bringing that ball. Mitchell, no good. They will have a chance here for the last shot. Trail by as many as 14. What will the deficit be when they go into the halftime break? Well, Sean East is going to have a lot to do with answering that question. And Kentucky's going to trap the ball out of his hands. Up and in, Carter. What a feel, though, by Sean East. John Calipari said someone else is going to have to beat us to close out the half. He went and trapped the ball out of Sean East. And Noah Carter, really good job of making himself available when the trap came. That's about a 30-foot pass. Watch the trap come, and Sean East just off the bounce. A surprise pass to everyone except Noah Carter. And a big play to close out the first 20 minutes. Huge play, still 4.6 to go. And the free throw no good. Kentucky's got a chance to push it, and they don't act as if they were aware of it. Shepard fires too strong. Well, there was a couple of seconds wasted there on the rebound off the free throw miss. So the deficit at the half will be five, thanks to Sean East and Noah Carter with 28 of the 42 for Missouri. Wagner's got 11, Mitchell 10, Dillingham double figures with 11. Chief Halftime Report ready to roll here on all the Knights action, Zubin and Seth. Five point game at the half, 47-42. You're watching the SEC on ESPN, one of the great teams right there. You'll see in the country, what, they're going for their 25th yeah. national championship, is that right? They have more national titles than any other chair program in the country, and they go to the nationals this weekend. Good luck to them. Back here with my dog, Jimmy Dykes, Carl Ravage, five point game. You look at it, field goal percentage, 
55-47, six three-point field goals for Missouri, five for Kentucky, a 10-point differential on the free throw line, one of the big differences in the game. Yeah, it is. Missouri's inability to get to that charity stripe is, could cost them in this game. That's a big number to overcome. A lot of good offense, though, yeah. especially from the guard play in this game right now. Shawnee's from Missouri. Man, he has been a hard cover. He can drive it into a jump shot. He can drive it into a rim finish. He's really good at shooting deep threes. He's gone from a 22% three-point shooter to 54% in one year. And you have to cover this kid sometimes five, six, seven bounces can put you in a spin cycle. He's so good with that pivot foot. And this kid, Wagner, he's starting to go downhill anytime he wants. Wagner with 11 first half points. And his ability to drive left down the left side of that lane and finish at the rim is really impressive. A lot of courage, a lot of toughness in those makes in traffic. And it's the Shawnees show for Missouri and Wagner right now leads the charge along with Dillingham. Those two freshman guards combined for 22 points. Dustin Edwards with a zero in the first half as far as points. Everyone else was on the floor, got at least four. On the other side, Carter's got 13 to back up East 15. So a five point game, 20 on the clock as we are set for the second half here at Rupp Arena. Missouri 8 and 6 on the season, 0 and 1 offer their loss to Georgia in conference. Kentucky with that hard fought win over Florida, 11 and 2. Get the ball in the hands of 55. Van over 75, seven foot five, starts this half. They swing it all the way to the corner and Bates too strong with a three and Mitchell with another rebound. Good look though, right? Yeah, we'll step up ball speed for Honor to work off of and find that backside bomb, did everything but drop. Trey Mitchell, the house of fire to start. There's East with a near steal, ball still loose. He's got it, Mitchell's behind him. That's too strong off the window. And Reeves pulls up with a three, and that's too strong. Uh, apparently, the rim shrunk during yeah, they the half. Did. Changed them out. They were huge, and now they are tiny. The new rims have been installed here at Rupp. <laughs> Same play that Kentucky ran against Florida, and Bradshaw shot it to close out the game. Edwards too strong. Cold start for both. Out of the halftime break. Good take and a rip foul from Reeves as Bates went right by him. He'll go to the free throw line. We'll remind everybody we have NBA action this week. Double dip. Steph and the Warriors. Zion and the Pelicans. That's at 8.30 Eastern time, 5.30 Pacific on ABC. And then on ESPN, Jokic and the Nuggets, they're in Utah to take on Marketing and the Jazz. NBA Countdown tips off the night at 7.30 Eastern time, and that's 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. It's your East Coast time, your Pacific time zones. Ravi, drivers don't make shooters better. Shooters make drivers better. And Kentucky's ability this year to shoot the ball from distance is what makes the driving ability of Wagner just that much more impactful. But I, I'd much rather start my offensive plan with shooters than I would drivers. Kentucky's had too many drivers in the past, not enough makers. Understood. Now you go to the shoot around and you can just see the ball going through the yeah. basket way more than it had the last couple of years. Yeah, it, was, it was a make around today. Yeah, a make around. Instead of a shooter around. No, shoot I like around. what you're doing. Edwards just feels like he's desperate to get one to go through the basket, and he finally did as he will go to the line to try to finish a three-point play. And look at Cal. He is yelling at Edwards to cheer him on. He says he is really, really close. Well, Edwards is a guy that's not going to live off of his jump shot. He's going to have to live off of offensive rebounds and body blow plays around the rim as a driver. And when they get this kid going number one in white, Kentucky still has another level they can get to. Six foot eight, 203 pound freshman out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's averaging nine and a half a game, and he finally has broken the seal with that bucket. Ravi, Kentucky leads the country in points per play off of baseline out of bounds under. They're averaging 
almost a point and a half per play in this situation. It leads the country. They're going to let Edwards launch a three. Around and out, and we're going to have one underneath. They're going to call that foul on Bates. And for Bates, that's his third personal. Missouri needs offense from Bates. He came in this averaging 18 over his last four. The transfer from Indiana has blossomed in a faster offensive system under Dennis Gates. Missouri hopes to get Caleb Grill, who had surgery on his wrist back next couple of weeks as a little fade away from Mitchell Falls. That surgery December is scheduled to miss five to seven weeks, and that is a high octane score out of Iowa State. Foul underneath. Take a look at that Mitchell shot. Well, he is a terrific connector, is Trey Mitchell. I mean, his voice defensively from day one when he stepped on this Kentucky campus, his voice mattered to the entire locker room. And there you see him talking and pointing it out, but he's a connector on the offensive end. Uh-oh, fell asleep. Basket by Bates. Got right by Edwards. To your point, you're right about Mitchell and the value he has to the freshman. Bradshaw listens to everything Mitchell tells him. There's an immense amount of value in what that grad transfer has to say and he's been a variety of places Texas West Virginia just to name a couple as Bradshaw knocks that one down such a weapon Ravi when you can step your seven footer out to the short corner and he's a legitimate jump shooter from that 12 foot spot and a one time 14 point lead now it's seven that's honor the floater that's too short and Reeves with a run out Edwards ahead Bradshaw following Nice play there. Edwards a little more confident here in half number two. Yeah, that's who he's wired to be, a guy that can score off of his defense. Cal will probably give him the hug or a high Absolutely. High. That's, that's what he's been wanting out of Edwards. Again, uh, for Missouri, you have to commit. Are we going to the offensive glass, or are we all five sprinting back when Kentucky rises, or when we rise on the shot? You don't do it, and Kentucky gets out and plays in front of your transition defense. One in white. Ton of talent. Big, long strides at the rim to finish. Food is unbelievable. I, I'm in on that because my birthday is May 3rd. What a great birthday present that would be to myself. Of course. That's interesting as Edwards has a terrific last 90 seconds. John Calipari told us today, he said, you have to be a player that if, if you have a bad first half, can you change in the middle of the game or do I have to take you out? And, and Edwards has shown Cal, I, I can fix things in the middle of the game, but boy, the best ones can do it. Vanover just threw that up, and the Eiffel Tower wasn't blocking that shot. <laughs> you're 7'5", and then you're throwing it, and as Edwards is feeling it, comes up short, and Mitchell had a chance for it. Edwards is there, and he led to that turnover. Good hands. Edwards has played harder than anybody else on the floor the last two minutes. Wagner had that knocked down, and they're going to get a foul on the floor. That may be on Tanje, and it is. Mansoop Tamar, Tennessee, talked about what Rick Barnes' team has done against Mississippi State. That's 7 o'clock Eastern time, and the Gators are at Ole Miss, who lost for the first time, and they got drubbed by Tennessee. How good can Ole Miss be as they play 9 Eastern on the SEC Network? Well, we're going to find out. They're going to have to secure those wins on their home floor because Chris Beard has a team that's more than capable of being in the NCAA tournament. And you watch that Tennessee team, Ravi, on Synergy. The two best defensive teams in the country right now, and it's not even close, are the Houston Cougars and the Tennessee Volunteers. A lot of similarities. Rick Barnes starting to hard hedge, man, and impact those ball screens like Houston does. And I, I, I had Houston right before Christmas, and I walked away from there thinking, I, I am not a fan of drop coverage anymore on ball screens because the way Houston does it, they hold you accountable, their bigs, to getting up and impacting the ball, knocking it out towards the timeline. And they make you think twice about running ball screen offense through the Houston Cougars. We saw Tennessee early when Zakai Ziegler was probably 60%. Yeah, maybe. He's moving closer to 100. He's the difference maker for them. Reed and Rob, the R&R boys, back in for Kentucky now. And again, here we are at 16. It feels like a big trip for Missouri. Down by nine. 
and East will launch a three. That's way off to the right, and it'll go out of bounds. Good job by Kentucky, though, to be in the gap, giving gap support right now to East instead of letting him just have space to start spinning and getting to the front of the rim. East is coming out, and Nick Honor is coming in. Honor struggled against Georgia, went one for seven, and he missed five of his six three-point field goals. He's one of four tonight. So he's made two field goals in the last two games. Shepard, really good pass to Mitchell. He knocks it down. Shepard makes so many good, smart passes every game. Shepard knew where the ball was going to go while the ball was in the air coming to him. And this is Trey Mitchell at his sweet spot. Ooh, it's a big three. Dillingham gave him a few feet, and he'll take advantage of it. Missouri now has seven three-pointers in the game. Shepard hesitation move. That's good defense. He had a block. Vanover, Honor, and they got numbers. Two on one. Bates. Good handoff. And we'll get a foul. It's going to be a three-point opportunity, I believe, or a timeout call. Yeah, an ill-advised drive by Reed Shepard. And the, the numbers break for Missouri. And you're right, man. A great rim decision to finish it off. But earlier, watch Reed Shepard. When the ball's in the air, he knows exactly where he's going with it. And Trey Mitchell, that is his sweet shot as a playmaker or a shot maker. I always look for the game within the game, and one of those has to do with points off turnovers. While well, Missouri's got eight, they've only got four points off the turnovers. Kentucky has got 14. A 10 point swing there. And then the other one of those, look at the numbers, the bench points. It feels like Kentucky is likely to always win the bench point it battle. Does. They're up 14-6 in that category. And a 10-point differential from the free throw line. So exactly. Missouri still finds itself just down eight with a couple of big key things working against them in this game. The jock back in. They don't have East on the floor. Where all the points come from? Carolero, too strong. Kentucky really good at advancing the ball off the pass and the bounce and switching the sides of the floor. And Missouri did a good job of building a wall and finding him on the weak side. Dillingham pulls up, three pop, got it. They call it a two. It has been there more than not tonight for Kentucky off that middle ball screen, high ball screen. It feels like every time. Every time. Missouri's just, they're not switching out high enough and hot enough to take it away. Will they be able to score enough points with East not on the floor? There's the steal, and Shepard has it. 10-point lead for Kentucky. Crowd senses things with 14 and a half to go. Bradshaw up no good. Good defense that time by Dillingham to stop Honor. He's guarding a fire hydrant. Dillingham is. Take advantage of Shepard there, who was screened. And Bates lays it up and into his right. Remember, that's too easy. That's just a simple cut out of the corner. And Reed Shepard gets caught ball watching. And now he picked up his dribble and looks for help. There's a good pass. Mitchell with a cut. Here you go again. Well, their quarterback waiting for a receiver yes. to break. And he threw it out in front of Mitchell. The time was impeccable like J.J. McCarthy last yes. night from Michigan because he's he's got defensive linemen in his face right here when he makes this thing. They're talking about Missouri. They're not switching up high on those Kentucky guards in that middle ball screen high pick and roll. There's that last pass. And there's a small window to lay it in between a defensive back rotating over and Mitchell. Perfect timing on the cut. East is back in. Bates has nine of the... Tigers 11 in the second half, still hanging around. The team passed it up, drives, nice take. Yeah, he, he went right by Onyenso. Dro drove the closeout of Onyenso. Not a three-point shooter, Onyenso comes out and gets out of balance a little bit. Wagner, Dillingham, and Shepard on the floor at the same time. Mitchell and Onyenso, the big guys. And firepower in the backcourt for Kentucky. And a travel on Onyenso. Now Perry's wondering why 
Wagner didn't throw that one to Shepard to get the play started. It feels like Kentucky would be up by more. It does. And Missouri has done a pretty good job of taking care of the ball good until and, and Dillingham just eats it up. Honor, and that's going to be two free throws as Dillingham's quick hands led to that run out and a foul on Nick Honor. Dillingham is becoming one of the better on ball defenders, not only in the SEC, but in the country. And his ability to, to get a hot touch and then hot touch the basketball on the rakeaway. And almost gets it to drop, but his on ball defense has risen to a whole nother level under the accountability of Calipari because he came in with a terrific following on social media with all the handles and all the offensive stuff that he could do. But boy, he can light up the ball, his nose on your number. Missouri has been led in scoring nine times by East. For Kentucky, it feels like. There's any number of guys who will lead the game in scoring any given night. They have so many different options. And right now it's Dillingham and Mitchell with 15 and 16. Wagner's got 13. Some night it could be Shepard doing it. East, that's a pretty finger roll and it will go. And that was speed on speed and the speed of East won the battle. He's into all the plyometrics and the yoga and the conditioning. And he's got his foot, or feet, I should say, underneath him for his jump shot. Wagner did on that one. He knocked down a three. Good job by Wagner to hold that follow through and feel the steal. His three-point shot is starting to grow in confidence and in accuracy because of it. And 14 against Florida. And honor three. Got it. When you're playing Missouri, you have to know three numbers. Number two, number 10, and number 55. Those are the legitimate shooters. Forget about their names. Two, 10, and 55 if you're Kentucky in this ball game. 35 every now and then. Every now and then 35. Good game. And that's how coaches go through scouting reports. Whoa, Dillingham from way downtown. One of those shots, the coach is like, no, no, yeah. All right, we're good. Lead is 11. Baseline open, they'll kick it to Bates. And he traveled with it. Yeah, uh, Dillingham is, again, one of those guys you talked about, Ravi, that can go on an 8-9-0 run by himself. That middle ball screen jump shot, Missouri still, they're too low, too flat, they got to get it fixed. Ravi Kentucky's gotten a lot of good looks on this on-ball action as Onyenso comes up to set the ball screen on 55 in black. His, his defender, 13 in black right there, is he's the switch man, but he still continues to be stuck where he's switching up to. You've got to get step up and get outside that three-point line if you're going to switch against Kentucky. The reason is Kentucky comes in making 10 threes a game, shooting 40%. You cannot give them clean looks right. off that on-ball screen. And it's a freshman class that plays like upper class. They have got 44 points tonight. The non-freshmen have 27. In the game against Florida, the freshmen accounted for 50 points in their win. And they're being very impactful again tonight. They will be all season. And there are many of them, as is the case with most Calipari teams. Dillingham dribbled into a turtle right in front of his bench. Well, I, I was driving. He's got risky speed with the ball. Most of the time it works out in his favor, but two or three times a game it won't. Three turnovers. Risk it for the biscuit right there. And, they lost the <laughs> and he'll take a seat. 18 points. You know who doesn't eat biscuits? Dennis Gates. No, no, he's, he's got that his, guy. his own he's, diet going. What he said, the last seven years he was with Leonard Hamilton, they did the Daniels diet, yeah. which is just all natural, fresh, Fruit, vegetables, nuts, a story from the Bible that they took it from. And he has stayed with it. Wow, long three. That's way off to the left. Shepard, out of bounds. You got to finish that story. His assistant associate head coach, CY, who's their offensive kind of coordinator, walked into Gates' office one day, and Gates was 
eating what looked like a fruit of some kind. He said, what are you eating? And he said, papaya. <laughs> and CY said, what? He said, papaya. And CY said, I, I don't go to papaya, but I'll go to Popeyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> I'm going to try that Daniels diet starting tomorrow. I thought you were going to say Popeyes. I'll try that later tonight. <laughs> Good pass. Bam. That's a big time flush. We haven't <laughs> seen many of those as Aiden Shaw sends it down. Yeah, Shaw is one of their better cutters off the ball. And Missouri just refuses to go away. Yeah. Entertaining ball game with some big time spurts, some good shooting, and then all of a sudden the team would go cold. I see those Missouri coaches telling their defense get up higher on the floor. You cannot dare Kentucky to shoot it. Watch this last cut though by Shaw off the ball. You drive baseline to explore, and that's exactly what happens. Missouri drives at baseline to explore. What's the opposite side of the floor going to do? Ravi, you win games with your ball side defense. You win titles with your off ball weak side defense. Kentucky that time got burned on that weak side. He's picked up his second. They'll kick it. Wagner, extra pass. Shepard, that's wow. a big time block. He dunked it on one end, and then on the other, Aiden Shaw goes high to block a Shepard shot. Dribbling into a double team. He throws it all the way across court. A dangerous pass. Honor. Too strong. Reeves got fouled. And that's going to be on Noah Carter. Long shot, long Noah's rebound. Sean East not afraid to throw a pass uh, across the court <laughs> with a lot of hang time, like a punt. 16 fouls now for Missouri. Too easy. Oh, oh wow. denied! Did he go up high? Here's Honor on the other end. And Mitchell and company smother him, and he will shoot a couple. Ravi, the defensive plays, though, by Aiden, Aiden Shaw. Shaw. My That's goodness. The best athlete that Missouri has is Aiden Shaw. And he just defensively has eliminated an automatic make. That's not easy to do against Wagner. Matter of fact, that's the first time I've seen it happen to Wagner all year. He's awfully explosive and awfully good. Wagner is at keeping the ball away from the defender, but that recovery length of Shaw, impressive. Shaw had several high-flying dunks against Georgia, scored 14 points. One thing Gates would like to see because of that athleticism, grab some more rebounds. He had a half a dozen. And he knows there's more in Aiden Shaw's tank than 6'9 sophomore, who is getting more and more confident on both ends of the floor. And we've seen in the last couple of minutes what he is capable of. I mean, Missouri's been tested. They went and won at Minnesota. They won at Pitt. And they played a good game against Kansas. Yeah, nine, eight, nine point game. And Cal told his guys today, this is a Missouri team. They put 89 on us last year, and we better be ready to play. Tough pass, not a good one from Wagner. Right into traffic, it's picked off, and a seven-point lead can shrink even further. A double drag for East, he just refuses to use it. Dillingham getting set to come back in. Carter, Shaw will try that. Wow, rotation was odd, to say the least. Good touch pass by Bradshaw, quickly to Reeves. Two-pointer, good. What a, what, what a play by Bradshaw. Yes, they, they put Bradshaw in a really bad spot, a seven-footer at the timeline, running full speed. His ability to get it and get rid of it, really well done by Bradshaw. The volleyball tap pass. Yeah. Had a chance at seven to cut it down to five or four, and now it's back up to nine. Cavallero, pretty move, but he was buried underneath the basket, and Bradshaw came over to help. I'm not sure he would have had a chance to get it up on the window if he didn't deflect that out of bounds. Watch Bradshaw right here. Mitchell puts him in a little bit of a bind. That's a lot for a seven-footer to handle going full speed. But to your point about the vo volleyball pass, and Antonio Reeves so good from the three, the mid-range, the runners, the rim finishes. High IQ play by Aaron Bradshaw as a pass. Reeves into double figures. He's got 10. Vanover back into the game. Seven foot five. He and Shaw.
Provide the height with honor. Bates and East. Dillingham and East getting into it. He's holding on to him, and that's an impossible pass that somehow East came up with. And Dillingham back into the game. He picks up another foul. That's number four. So Missouri's inability to get to the one and one in the first half, and now they're there. That's the 17th foul on Kentucky. And they take advantage of it now and continue to get fouled and score in Rupp Arena. As quick as Dillingham is, at least tonight, he's met somebody who can match him with speed in East. Knocks down the free throw. Sean East has 18 points. And free throw discrepancy is getting a little tighter now. What's the routine? Ball goes behind the back. That's short, and he gets it to go over the front of the rim and then off the backboard and down. I'm not sure Wagner had a chance to grab a drink before he is back in the game with the foul on Dillingham. Seven point lead for Kentucky. Shepard with Shaw, Mitchell, he just threw East out of the way. And Reeves goes the baseline with a foot. You go with the high shoulder of a guy out of the corner, you're going to give up the baseline. But to your point about Mitchell throwing a guy out of the way, with five on four Kentucky offense. Reeves with a reach from the back. It looks like he is going to get called for the foul. And you've got to square a guy up when you close out on a corner player. You close out the high, the high shoulder. Mitchell with a little bit of a seal off. Breeze with the attack. 8:45. That Iowa State Houston game. A little different story here. 75-66. And Jimmy, it, it, it's close on the scoreboard, and yet it never feels like Missouri has been close enough. Is that a fair assessment of what? We're watching? Yes, it is. But on the flip side, Kentucky knows they're in a battle right now with 7.35 to go. Mizzou has gotten himself to the free throw line now. And they have the one-on-one -on -one ability of Sean East, Bates. Honor can cause you a problem. Shaw defensively starting to impact the game. Nine free throws have been made by Missouri. 16 for Kentucky. Difference of seven. Difference in the game is now seven. Wagner, Mitchell, Edwards. Reeves, who seems to have come alive here a little bit in the second half. And Bradshaw, he's open underneath. They get it to him a little late. But after Shaw blew by him, he threw it down. Missouri went with a 1-3-1 to a 2-3 zone alignment, and then they started switching everything from there. Good job by Kentucky to recognize it, be patient to reverse it, and get it to the rim. Down low, Wagner. Carter, wide open, Bates. No good. Look at Shaw go up and rip it away. That's what Dennis Gates wants to see more out of Aiden Shaw. Honor three. In and out. That would have pulled him within six. Bradshaw big time height advantage with Bates on him underneath. Reeves, the hard drive, and he connected with East, who is down. And he was literally in his pocket, and I think an elbow may have come up and got him some part of Reeves got him. Yeah, a year ago when Reeves got smothered and took away his jump shot. He wasn't capable of driving the ball and getting the pressure off of himself. This year that he is, as he tries to bring that ball through, there's, they may take a look at it, but there wasn't any contact with the elbow as he's tried to swing the ball from the right side to the left side of his body right here. The ball, to me, clips east in the chin. How do you see it? Same. I see a guy playing so tight on defense. There's no room for Reeves to maneuver that ball. And he caught ball maybe part of his wrist. But John East is uh, down and with 630 to go. 
Dennis Gates has come out there to talk with him. So Lindsay and the officials now they've done in the women's game and the NBA using the microphone to inform the audience exactly what's going on. So obviously the play is under review. The best sign here is that East is up and moving. And Louisville native has had himself a game and they would be hard pressed to score as many points as they need to without East on the floor the last 6.30. Towel over his face as he heads to the end of the bench. Well, one, you certainly hope that he's okay, and two, it'd be very difficult on Missouri if he's not able to come back in this game. And he took a pretty good hit, ball, wrist, whatever, right across the bridge of the nose area. And your point about Reeves, and you made the point earlier in the first half about these Kentucky players. Calipari last year, a lot of the guys when they had off first halves meant they were off for the game. Yeah. And Reeves was one of those guys. He has put on a lot more muscle. And as we've seen here in the second half, has now got his scoring total up to 13 points. I love the story that Antonio Reeves wasn't sure he was going to return to Kentucky this year. And those freshmen got together on a group text and convinced him, you're the missing piece. Mm. And he has come right back in and taken his game to a whole nother level. Big physical guard. He's got six of their last eight. An 11 point lead. Carter. Tough tick, and there will be a whistle and two more free throws for Carter. Don't forget Jim Beheim and company. They are in Pittsburgh for the game against the Duke Blue Devils. Duke and Pitt follows us. 9 o'clock Eastern time here on ESPN. I think we're going to push that a little bit with 6.20 to go. Jeff Capel versus John Shire. Be a good one on one matchup back in the day. Would it not have been? I think the shot by Jeff Capel, I think it's 1995, that running 40 footer at the end of the first overtime in that Duke Carolina game. One of the great games ever. Yeah. I think it tied it up at 95 95. Carolina went on to win, but one of the one of the great shots of all time in that Duke Carolina rivalry. If I'm not mistaken, that was where the early days, I was in the studio. That was the ESPN2 effort to get Duke Carolina on ESPN2, and it was that type of game, that type of shot that continued to. Yeah. They helped put ESPN2 on the map, but certainly that rivalry stoked the flames of Duke, North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, it's a nine-point game, and Missouri feels very comfortable right now. Locking in defensively over the last five or six minutes. Again, they have moved their defense up. They've had enough of those ball screen actions into jump shots out of Kentucky. Wagner to Mitchell, who started off a uh, house of fire, and he lost that ball. East is now off the bench and getting help behind the bench for Missouri. Other guys are going to have to step up. Bates, that's a terrible pass. He's lucky to have that still be Missouri basketball. It had nothing on it, and both Edwards and Reeves had a chance to pick it off. And look at look at Reeves underneath his left eye. A shiner there for a while. Well, to answer your question, Noah Carter, Nick Honor, that's the second and third scoring option for Missouri on the year. Talking about 35 in black and 10 in black. Yep. Bates also. Tough take. Bradshaw may have got it, and that's a Kentucky basketball. And that's speed to Kentucky. They space the floor with shooters, and they have legitimate shot makers. Missouri's transition defense has been really, really good, especially in the second half. High screen, and Dillingham takes it to the hole. Carolero Martin fouls him. I love the growth of Rob Dillingham. You know, first time I was here back during Pro Day, a lot of questions about would he give the ball up, because he is a dominant, dominant bouncer of the ball. 
coming out of high school, but man, he has adjusted so well to a strong ball mover, but still at his core now, he is a downhill driving speed guard. Missouri and its training staff continue to look at Sean East behind the bench, kind of tucked away there in the corner. Saw that bump underneath his left eye, and perhaps could be that they're dealing with some blurred vision in that eye. As Honor takes Wagner softly, no good. Rebound offensive. Another tough pass to me. They've made some passes they shouldn't, and they're getting away with them. They're retaining the basketball. Yeah, they ran open offense that time in Carter with a mismatch as a cutter, but a good job by Bradshaw to swing his eyes around and get that left paw on it. East is again sitting back on the bench for Missouri. He's their leading score with 19, but out after getting hit with either the basketball or a fist. Three needed. Too strong as the shot clock expired, and Bradshaw ripped it away. And they got numbers. Dillingham and Wagner. Tough pass. He was looking for the alley oop, and he threw it at his knees. And there's two freshmen. Jimmy don't know quite each other as well as they would if they were playing multiple years together. Yeah, that's a pass that Wagner normally makes to a a seven footer on the opposite side. And Dillingham's got the hops to go up and get it. And that's what he was expecting. Bates launches a three. In and out. They've had a couple of them here in the second half. And they cannot chip away at this 10 point lead. I think Missouri started to impact that on ball action of Kentucky. Mitchell launches too strong. He'll advise. Quick shot. As Honor throws one up. That's way off. Missouri is not helping themselves. Wagner ahead. The left hand can't go, but he'll get two free throws out of it. And it's Honor will pick up the foul. Shots before turnovers. That's what Dennis Gates wants out of his guys. They're doing that right now to hang in this game only down 10. Looks like Sean East is set to check back in when we come back to Rupp with under four to go. You know, in the studio, you have Z and X. We call Seth X every now and then. X you and O, coaching genius. So we have Z and okay. X. Z and X tonight. The alphabet crew in there. And since Texas got Dylan DeSue back, they are a different team. And Ace Smith is as good a one-on-one -on -one guy as there is in the country. He is small, but he can he can get him off, can he? You get a good news from Missouri to Sean East. Yeah. They're going to be down, what, 10 or 11 points here with under four to go. Yeah, only 10. They missed two free throws from Wagner. That's frustrating for Cal and Kentucky. Been 10 for a while. Teams will tell you though, let's get it to 10 with four to go. We got ourselves a fighter's chance. Carter backs down. Edwards missed, and the whistle comes late on Edwards. Well, I heard the contact on the slap down. Missouri now getting ready to go to the free throw line for the 17th time in this game. That's a big number for Missouri. They're one of the few teams that really find it hard to get to the stripe. I like the isolation call. This kid is a hard match for Noah Carter. He's the closest that Dennis Gates has to a pick and pop thread off of a ball screen. If you can invert him with that big body and gets himself to the line because of it. Carter's first free throw rattles around and in. Noah Carter is a 79% free throw shooter. He's three of four tonight. Once a 10 point difference on the free throw line, Carter knocks this down. It'll be a five point differential. That's way too strong and off to the left. Missed opportunity. Reed Shepard back in the game for Kentucky. Shepard's been very quiet tonight. He's only taken four shots. With the adjustment, though, defensively by Missouri in this half, Ravi. Now they're outside that three point line, even on switch actions. Watch it, Reeves, corner three, no good. Offensive rebound. That may be a hook and hold. Mitchell and Carter yapping at each other. And their arms got locked up, Jimmy. I'm sure that Lindsay and company will probably take a look at this. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I didn't see a clamp down by either guy. Now they both do get locked up. Talking about Carter and Mitchell. Mitchell in the line for two. I just think I that's a foul. Yep. Yeah. So Mitchell with 16 points, two of two from the stripe tonight. Three of three. Talk about that balance between having some upperclassmen and freshmen, and this is one of those additions right now for Kentucky, where they benefit from Reeves and from Mitchell to help all the youngsters out. Knocks them both down. Kentucky now 20 out of 25 from the free throw line, 21 out of 26. Man, that's a big number. Big night for Mitchell with 18 points and 10 rebounds. And Reeves deflected it out of bounds. Desperation time now for Missouri, down 11 with 3.06 to go. They're going to bring Bates back in. Checking up for the Tigers is number two, Tamar Bates. Tanjay will stay in, so they have five guys capable of putting three pointers up and making them. Tanjay, the drive, throws it up with his left. It looks like Antonio Reeves is going to get whistled for the foul. Yeah, Kentucky really starting to pressure one pass away, making sure that they're not going to let Missouri get three-point shots off. So as a result, Missouri reads the floor. A good job by five in black to just attack to the front of the rim. Antonio Reeves, third foul. More free throws now for Missouri. Tanjay, the line. The magic number for Missouri with regards to three pointers has been seven. The last two years, when they have made seven or more, they are 31 and six. They've done that tonight with eight. Well, I talked about in the first half, I felt like Missouri needed to get to double figures in this game, make 10 or 11 to have a chance to pull off an upset. Now the importance of that second made free throw, Dennis Gates is going to go back to his press. Kentucky's press offense. Oftentimes a, results in a dunk. They scored at a high, high clip so far in this game against Missouri's press. Shepard and Dillingham back there to receive the inbounds pass. They're able to break it fairly easily. Missouri needs to stop down by nine, under three to go. Mitchell, good roll, good hands that time, deflected out of bounds by Carter. So there'll be nine on the shot clock. Good job by Mitchell to short roll out of the ball screen to become a playmaker. Missouri with active hands to keep an automatic two from happening for Kentucky with a cutter coming from the corner. Shepard had nobody open, so he calls timeout. It'll be a 30-second break. We will take it with him. 2.37 on the clock at Rupp, 82-73. Our Capital One rewarding performance goes to Rob Gillingham tonight. 19 points, missed only one shot, didn't miss a three-pointer. They certainly could make a case for Trey Mitchell with his 18 points, 10 rebounds in 37 minutes of action. But the continued growth of that guy, Rob Gillingham, they kind of had a running joke about Gillingham. Just make easy plays, Rob, make the easy ones. As they let Rob be Rob, and there's the good, delicate balance there. There is. Missouri's going zone on this corner out of bounds. Short clock is Kentucky. Three North. seconds. I don't think he knows it. He's going to have to know it now, and they're not going to get it off. Air ball, shot clock violation. Well, just not near aggressive enough. The first touch came at the timeline, and from there, man, you got to get downhill in a hurry. Kentucky came out of the timeout with only nine seconds on the shot clock. Big possession for Missouri right now. John East has not scored since he came out of that game, and you can see the underneath his left eye swollen. The 
Waits in the paint. That's a tough shot, really tough shot. And Shaw's going to get called for the foul as Mitchell ripped it away. They've gone cold here, and they haven't had good passes or good shots down the stretch. Now, a little bit of a force by Bates, because Kentucky that time, they were gap heavy with Bates going isolation and put two or three bodies between Bates and the rim and made a very difficult attempt for two in black. It's important to note, Jimmy, just given, as you mentioned, the tough game and how competitive they were against Kansas, tough here at Rupp. When they get Caleb Grill back, what a difference he could make. Uh, Caleb Grill is a, is a dog competitor, first of all. And Dennis Gates knows if he gets his team full strength, and Anthony Robinson also not available tonight yes. is a very talented point guard. Another guy that defensively tonight would have been a major player in this game. Dennis Gates won 25 games last year, his first year at Missouri. Really grew up underneath the tutelage of Leonard Hamilton. And he pointed to the Raptors, reminded everybody Leonard Hamilton was an assistant coach here from 1974 to 86. And of course, they won the national championship right away with Hamilton on the bench. East, the pull up. That's too short. Mitchell, another rebound. Gillingham, the alley oop, and that is rolled over the rim by Bradshaw. It was a staple of John Calipari over the years to put his big opposite in the dunker spot. It's an easy play for a seven-footer. 90 seconds to go, a 13-point advantage for the Wildcats. Back to the studio and Zubin. Carl, Jimmy, for those of you looking for Duke and Pittsburgh, it's currently 4-0 Blue Devils on ESPNU as Pitt's on the board as soon as you guys are done. That'll be over on ESPN. And moments ago, Iowa State knocks Houston from the ranks of the undefeated. Fellas? Houston defeated now. Ole Miss defeated now. Yeah. Grammy Kentucky comes in averaging 91 points a game. They're going to be right there again. And a tremendous offensive skill and speed out of Kentucky this year. You think about it, Alabama, UMBC, Cornell, and Kentucky. They score more points the first 10 seconds of the shot clock than anybody else in college basketball. That's the speed factor that Cal has this year and how they open the floor. Completely different offensive team this year than what he had last year to work with. I believe that's the first time that those schools have been mentioned with in Kentucky, the same UMBC sentence. UMBC and Cornell in yeah, Kentucky? Yeah, in Kentucky, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that's not a knock on any one of them, but it, I don't know that you've used those three or anybody has ever used those in the same sentence. You did it. Well, you, if you to go win. to you go to hoopmath.com when you have a five-hour layover <laughs> in the Dallas airport, you yeah. start digging into all kinds of stuff and looking show at the people at home your notes. What all you kinds did. of numbers here. I mean, you go to the Dallas airport for five hours, you come up with all kinds of stuff, and that one grabbed my attention. <laughs> <laughs> Bury your nose in the notes. You're going to come up with something good. Five hours you spent in yes. DFW, <laughs> and Cal even picked up on it today. So, what do you have written down there? <laughs> you have not subscribed to the less is more <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> the East injury seemed to take the wind out of the sails of Missouri, whatever wind was blowing in their sails. And you feel back because he was terrific again tonight. Carter. Let me get one on the floor here. Call that on Trey Lewis. <laughs> Uh, Trey Mitchell, I should say. Carter will shoot a couple. Our next three games from Kentucky, A&M, Mississippi State, and Georgia. Mike White's got Georgia playing a lot better. Yeah, I will see Georgia for the first time tomorrow night, Arkansas at Georgia. And Georgia just went on the road and at Missouri on Saturday and got yeah. Their first conference win. That, that team looked completely different than they did a year ago under Mike White. Be interesting to see how Arkansas responds. The Lust Pass is running around with some flat tires right now. Yeah, they're going to be able to put the air back in those they, tires. They sure need to. Auburn went into Bud Walton Arena on Saturday. Woo! and the, the worst loss in the history of the building, 32 points. Anxious to see how Arkansas responds tomorrow night. Noah Carter ties his season high with 18 points, and Dillingham's going to end up at the free throw line as he attempts to score his 20th points. 
Randy, the SEC is loaded up this year in NCAA tournament teams. And Joe, Joe Lenardi right now has eight currently in. And Florida, one of the first teams out right now. George is under consideration. And I, I've said since the beginning, I believe this is the year the SEC goes above their all-time high of eight NCAA tournament teams. I think they'll end up with nine. I can see that. Extremely deep. We talked about in the first half, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Auburn. You've got three of the top ten teams in college basketball out of this league right now. One minute. Thirteen-point lead, less than a minute to go. Three-pointer misses, and Kentucky looks like it's on its way to its 12th win against two losses and will improve to 2-0. and in the conference. Well, Missouri got a lot of good looks in this ball game from the three point line. You look up, they're shooting 30% in the game. So only once out of Missouri's last seven games had they shot above 33% from three. And they rely so much on that three point shot dropping in Dennis Gates' system. Knowing what Calipari after his shoot around this morning wanted to do in the game tonight, spacing was one of them. Getting open shots, a little more freedom with other things. What did they accomplish tonight? Well, I think they still a very competitive team. And Cal will be the first to tell you, I've got a bunch of dogs this year. And you've got 18 SEC conference games. You have to approach every one of them like it's an NCAA tournament team. And I, I, I like the competitive fire and fight out of Kentucky this year as much as I've had in, in, in any of the last four or five. Nice. 15-point game down to 13. The crowd here wondering why Dennis Gates decided to call a timeout with 40 seconds to go. Duke and Pitt fans are wondering why they sure call a timeout. We want to see our game on ESPN now. And the offensive firepower. We gave Dillingham a lot of props, but Trey Mitchell has 20 as well. Five, five guys for Kentucky with 14 or more points in this game. Trey Mitchell is so versatile, Ravi. He can make a pass as a playmaker at 6'9 and that from that nail area, but he's a good cutter. He moves the ball well. He sees the floor well. And his voice, I talked about it from day one when he got here. They, they, his teammates have responded to this kid's lead. And they'll go home to a happy aura tonight yeah. waiting, for a, yes. waiting for a dog bone, right? No doubt about it. You know, he left West Virginia after the Huggins DUI and departure from the program. He's got a lot of emotional stories that he can share with these young kids about his experiences, and he's not afraid to do it. And he talks about his own mental health issues during his time at Texas. And he knows the value of being able to talk to your teammates. He said, our connection with others is what helps us get a lot of people through their day-to-day -day life. As a guy on a team, those types of messages are so critical. Mm -hmm. uh, he held Kentucky together before they got their seven footers on the floor at that mismatch five spot. Missouri's going to be a tough out this year in the SEC. Just not enough to come into Rupp Arena tonight. They average 91. They're sitting there at 90. There's an alley oop that was too high for Mitchell. And last 10 seconds. Look at Mitchell, isn't it fitting? He goes to the floor in the last seconds to seal the deal. Kentucky wins again, 90 to 77. Dillingham leads the way with 23, Mitchell 20. Calipari in Kentucky, a winner tonight. That'll do it for us, 90-77, our final. For Jimmy Dykes, I'm Carl Rabbit. So long from Rupp, West Durham, Corey Alexander, and Jim Beheim have it in Pittsburgh.